So we're going to do this Ferris wheel problem here. <clears throat> and I think a good place to start will be to begin with a picture of what's going on. So we got a Ferris wheel 50 meters in diameter. And we'll just draw that as a circle. And it's bordered from a platform that's two meters above the ground. And the six o'clock position on the Ferris wheel. So I, I can't draw the platform because I don't know if it's at the bottom or if you're going to board over here. So we're going to read a little bit more. The six o'clock position on the Ferris wheel, which will be at the bottom right there, is level with the loading platform. All right, so our platform is right here. Now, what I'm going to do is assume that this is on the ground level, and then the ground would actually be two meters below this. So that distance will be two meters. And this question asks about 42 meters. So because I'm going to offset it by two, I'm going to just say that this is 40 meters above the ground. Uh, my numbers happen to work out really nicely here. Yours might be a little bit different, but basically what I did is I said, all right, instead of starting two meters above the ground and going to 42, we're going to start at zero and go to 40. So I just drop both of those by two. So I could redraw my picture now with that as the ground. All right, 50 meters in diameter. So that's all the way across. The whole total height is 50. So if I draw this, that'll be 50, which means the radius, if I draw a radius here, that'll be 25. And a six o'clock position, da, da, da. the wheel completes one full rotation in six minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the period is six. How many minutes of the rider spent higher than 42 meters above, or 40 meters above the ground? So that's 25, so 40 is going to be somewhere right about here. That 50 is very misleading. I probably should write at the top. So that'll be 40. So we basically want to know how long, if we take this ride, how long are we going to spend in this part of the Ferris wheel? Okay, so. This distance is 25 from the bottom to the middle. So from the middle to the 40 is going to be another 15. Right there. So that's going to be 15. Let's redraw this. I don't really like red pens anyway. So let's redraw this, except I'm going to position it so it's right at the origin. This question's already tricky enough. Let's make it as close to being a, a normal circle centered at the origin as we can. So it's not the unit circle, it's a 25 meters or 25 radius. And again, we want to go up 15. So if that's 25, 15, we'll say something right about there. All right, we could technically just scale this to a unit circle, uh, just divide all the distances by 25, and then they'll turn into ones and ones, and this will be 15 over 25. That would be a reasonable thing to do. Uh, or we can just keep it with this big circle. Um, let's go ahead and scale it down so it becomes an even more simple problem. And again, how did I get that 15? You can go back and watch that part of the uh, video, but I wanted to know the offset from the center to measure the height because I wanted to line it up down here. So I'm gonna scale to unit circle. Just draw about that big right there. All right, so our new height, so we're dividing everything by 25. So our new height proportionally is the same, but it's going to be 15. Well, let's reduce this. 15 20 fifths is 3 fifths. All right, so that'll be 3 fifths right there. And I want to know how long we're going to spend above 3 fifths. Okay, so we're obviously thinking about y values here, not x values, so the cosine function makes sense. So let's start with that. We have, I'll write the generic cosine function with all the shifts in it. All right, we have eliminated quite a few of these, so let's cross out. I scaled this to a unit circle, so a is gonna be one. 
I also shifted it down so that we're centered at the origin, which means K would be zero. There's no shift up or down. Uh, it just asks how many minutes of the rider spent higher than that amount above the ground. So I don't actually need to worry about this uh, period or horizontal offset. We can just say that we start, if I'm gonna use a cosine function, we'd actually be starting time zero would put us right here. Uh, and so all we really gotta do is figure out the period here. So I don't know if I wrote down that, yep, P equals six, that's all we really needed. P equals six, and of course, do not forget, the period is two pi over W. So what we're gonna do is solve for W. Six equals two pi over W. So divide by two, we got three equals pi over W, multiply by W, three W equals pi, divide by three, pi over three. All right. So there we go, that's our function. Okay, we wanna know when is it height of three fifths. So we can set three fifths equal to cos pi over three x. All right, I'm not gonna solve for x here. That's part of a different lesson, uh, which would solve it, just be called solving trig equations. Uh, but basically you invert cosine and then unmultiply by pi over three. Uh, you should get, well, you'll get infinite solutions, but there are two solutions on the unit circle that we're looking for. And we want to get the one consecutive solutions. So we're gonna measure the positive ones. And I'll call this one theta one, and the other one I'll call theta two. Now they're not asking uh, how many minutes in do we hit this position. They're really asking how long do we spend going from one to the other. These thetas are gonna be time values, which is, that's why we scaled it over here. So you wanna know the elapsed time, which is gonna be end minus start. And the way I labeled it, theta two is gonna be end, and theta one is gonna be start. So you just subtract those two theta values and that should give you the angle in between. And because we scaled it for time already, that angle will be the uh, number of minutes in between.